Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I am getting ready to start dinner. I have been outside actually working in the garden most of the day today and I need to get dinner going. This is a very simple recipe. Um, it's a little bit of a favorite. It is a German cabbage soup. Very easy to make, very creamy, and it is just it is a great soup, especially for a cold winter night with a big old slice of crusty bread on the side. It'd be perfect, but you don't have to wait for winter to enjoy the soup, and it is one of my favorites. Now, if you like fried cabbage, you'll probably really like this soup as well because that is one of the main things that goes into the soup. I shred it up and I cook it until it is nice and caramelized and it's got those brown bits and it's kind of sweet and so that is sort of the foundation of the soup. You could almost call it a fried cabbage soup. So I will go grab an apron and we will get started. Alright so one of the first things I'm going to need is some bacon and I just need some pieces, about five slices of bacon, cut up, and I'm going to cook it in my Dutch oven that I have here on the stove, and I'll cook it until it's kind of crispy, and then I will scoop it out onto a dish lined with some, some paper towel, and I will use those drippings from the bacon to cook the cabbage in. Alright, so I cut these into about a uh, half inch to three quarter inch pieces. And now I'm just tossing them in here into this Dutch oven and I'm just kind of separating the pieces as I put them in here. One of those bacon slices was a little bit thicker than the others. I keep thinking it's two slices but it's actually just one. Alright, now I'm just going to cook these over kind of a medium heat. I've got the heat up a little high at the moment. I'm just heating up the Dutch oven. But once it gets nice and heated, I'll turn that down and I'll keep it at about a medium heat and cook these until, like I said, they are golden brown and crispy. You don't have to cook it that much if you don't want to, but I just like that sort of texture with my, um, with my bacon. All right, so now while that is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cabbage and start cutting that up and getting it ready. Now I did a tutorial, I think it was last week, on how to slice up a head of cabbage the easy way and safely without uh, trying to balance it and all of that. It really is easy, this one's got kind of a a really big stem, so I'm going to slice off part of that. So I've gotten some questions about the process of making my videos like this here and one of those questions was about the lighting that I use they, they said you know the the lighting looks really good in these videos what kind of lighting do I use uh, I will tell you at the moment I am using no lighting <laughs> uh, since I painted the kitchen the white cabinets the brighter walls uh, it makes it a lot brighter in here and because of that, I, at the moment, I have no lights on. The only light is coming through the window. I do my very best to not use artificial lighting unless I absolutely have to because I think it um, alters the lighting that you see. 
So I always, always try to use natural lighting whenever possible. Now, on the occasion that I do need to use lighting, the light bulbs that I have here in my house are full spectrum bulbs. And so they are as close to sunlight as you can get from a bulb. So I'm, I'm very um, intentional about finding those sorts of bulbs. Now I don't use them everywhere. For instance, over my kitchen sink in that antique uh, light that I have hanging there, I actually have one of those Edison style bulbs because I just like the gentle light there over the sink. I also have those Edison bulbs uh, in that light over the kitchen table because there's so many bulbs over there. First of all, you don't need super bright bulbs, but also, you know, they're exposed, they're exposed bulbs, and that's kind of the look of that light anyways. Um, so I, I don't use these full spectrum bulbs everywhere, but I do try to use them any place that I, I use my camera on a regular basis. Now I'm just setting all of this shredded cabbage over here in this bowl to get it out of the way for the time being because I'm not yet done with my cutting board. I, I have a couple more things I'm going to use it for. And my bacon is still cooking, so we'll give that a few minutes. Just kind of do its thing. Now all of these leaves, these outer leaves, these will all go out to the rabbits. So I won't, I won't toss those yet. All right. So I've got a dish here that I'm lining with some paper towels. I'm going to take my, my slotted spoon and I'm going to scoop out the bacon. And we're going to leave all those drippings in the pot. All right, so I'm just going to set these aside for now. Look at that crunchy bacon. Yum. So I'm going to take my shredded cabbage and I'm going to put this all into the Dutch oven here. So it's at kind of a low medium temperature and I'm going to let that cabbage cook in those bacon drippings until they are just beautiful and golden and caramelized, uh, nice and tender. I'm not going to stir this too often, but I will stir it from time to time. But the longer it sits on the, on the surface, the cooking surface, the more caramelized it gets. So I will stir it to kind of get the different pieces of cabbage down in there but I won't stir it too frequently. And then while that is cooking, I'm going to dice up some potatoes. I've already peeled them, so I'm gonna go ahead and cube them up. And I had these sitting in water because I didn't want them um, oxidizing, basically, and, and getting all weird colored while I was waiting on the other things to cook. So I'm just going to cube these into like uh, three-quarter of an inch or so pieces. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's really just whatever size pieces you would like them to be in. Um, you know, for in soup. And normally I would use uh, three russet potatoes for this, but these potatoes were a little bit on the small side, so I used four of them here. And 
Again, with soups, with recipes like this, you can really adjust it to your own taste. If you want a lot of potatoes in this, add a lot of potatoes. It really is up to you according to your taste. Please don't think that you have to follow any recipe exactly to the T, with the exception of canning. <laughs> those, those are the only times you really have to be diligent um, about that. And even with canning, there are certain things you can be flexible with. But normal cooking recipes, you know, they're very, very flexible. You can adjust things to taste. It's your kitchen. It's your food that you're cooking. Make it the way you want to. All right, so this is almost there. We've got these beautiful brown bits of, of cabbage. But I've still got a good bit of crispy green in there, so I'm going to let this go a little bit longer. Because the more of that golden brown caramelized cabbage that you have, the more flavor it's going to put in your soup. Alright, so now I'm going to deglaze the pan. So now down in the bottom of the pot here, the Dutch oven, I've got a lot of brown bits. And I want all of that flavor to go into the soup. So I'm going to deglaze the pot with a little bit of white wine. And these little bottles are so handy, especially if you don't drink a lot of wine or maybe you are very picky about the wine that you drink. This is a great way to have wine for cooking without wasting a whole bottle. This is about two thirds of a cup of wine and it's exactly what I need for this recipe. So I'm pouring in some white wine. And I'm going to kind of stir and scrape the bottom of the pot to get all of that flavor off of there and up into the cabbage. Okay, so now I need some beef broth. This is, I, you need about four cups. This is a little bit shy because I just opened it uh, and I used some of it. Um, so I'm going to pour in all of this. If I need some more, I can just open up an another carton. But the recipe calls for four cups of beef broth. I'm going to add in my cubed potatoes. I'm just going to make sure I have enough liquid to cover those. turn my stove up because I want to bring this to a boil. Alright, I had to turn on a light. It's getting a little bit dark. It's that time of year. The sun's going down sooner. Alright, so now I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of dry parsley. And a half a teaspoon of dry thyme. salt and pepper. About a half a teaspoon or so of each. Okay. So we're going to bring this to a boil, then we'll reduce the heat and simmer it until the potatoes are just cooked through and tender. And to help that along, I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on. So this has been cooking for a bit, so I am going to test the potatoes, make sure that they are cooked through, and to do that I just look for the biggest one, 
I mean, I cut them all about the same size, but there are going to be a little bit of variation, so I just look for the thickest one I can find and stick a fork in it. And that went in pretty easily. So I am going to call the potatoes cooked. So now there is one thing left to go into the soup, and that is some heavy cream. I don't have a heart attack. Yes, I am putting heavy cream in this soup. Now, if you wanted to, I suppose you could substitute um, whole milk or half and half or maybe even some almond milk in this, but it is not going to give you the same creamy texture. It's just, it's not going to be the same. So if you're not afraid of heavy cream, or if you don't have any dietary restrictions, definitely use the heavy cream. So I'm putting in a cup, half of this carton. That'll do it. And I'm just going to stir this in and just let that get all nice and hot and then it'll be ready. Alright, so the soup is finished, but before I put it in a bowl and, and finish it up. I wanted to answer a question and that is how do I take these aprons off when I'm done wearing them? So I find that the easiest way to do it is sort of like taking off a shirt. I take my hands and I cross them over and I grab my side pockets, okay, side pocket and I just lift. Just like that. So, aprons off and ready to go on the hook. Alright, so grab a little bowl of this gorgeous soup. Now I say gorgeous, but I will say it's not very photogenic because it is all brown, which makes it difficult to photograph for my website. But, if you did want to add a little bit of color to this, you could put some fresh minced parsley on top and that would add a little bit of color. But, your taste buds don't actually have eyes, even though our eyes do uh, draw us into food. Your taste buds taste. And this will taste delicious. So that is it. That is how you make the German cabbage soup. If you would like to be able to save this recipe on Pinterest or print it out, I have a free printable version over on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com. I will put a link to it down below where you can find that, and I will put this in a card up there if you are watching this on YouTube. If you are new here, my name is Constance and I am a writer over at cosmopolitancornbread.com and over there you can find hundreds of recipes and articles. Here on the channel I do at least three videos every week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. So thanks for joining me here in the homestead kitchen while I cook supper. I will talk to y'all next time.